tell you about a super secret feature we're going to be launching on the site in the very near future. I have to whisper because it's so secret. Our competitors might be listening right on the other side of that wall. Okay. All drama aside, I am really, really excited about this new feature we're going to be launching. It's tentatively being called our combat trainer or our scenario trainer, and it's going to put you in situations pre and post flop that come up over and over again. And for uh, most of us, when they when it comes up, you immediately start saying, oh, this always happens. How do I play this? Uh, some examples would be having ace king pre-flop where you miss the flop um, you know you playing uh, let's say pocket jacks and an ace comes on the turn um, flopping a draw of some sort and you get uh, donk bet into by your opponent you know things like that that uh, you find yourself when when the situation does happen saying oh you know I, I never know what to do here Whereas if you played it enough in our scenario trainer, instead what you're going to find yourself saying is, of course I know what to do here. I just played this a hundred times in a row on advanced poker training, and now I really do feel comfortable in this situation. So I think you're really going to love this new feature, and we should have it uh, at least within a month. The hand I'm going to review today, I'll preface it by saying that a lot of how to play this hand depends on your read on your opponent. And so this hand is not going to be the kind of hand where I'm going to pull up a big chart of, of your opponent's hand range. Uh, it's Your opponent has a very narrow hand range in this situation, as do we, and a lot of deciding what the correct play is has to do is what do we know about this guy? What is our read on him? Uh, you know, he's obviously got a very limited number of bluffs in his range and a very limited number of value hands. And which one of those is going to which which one of those is going to win out to decide whether we're going to call this uh, this big bet or or fold? So let's get right to the hand. But one thing I do want to say before that is I get asked a lot about how to how much to pay attention uh, when you're playing live poker. You know, there's a lot of distractions out there. There's TVs all over the place, and of course you're getting text messages from maybe you know your wife and kids. Um, you're you know you're ordering food, and it's really tough to pay attention. And even if you're uh, even if you're not doing all those other extraneous things, if you're playing uh, a, you know a four hour or six hour session, it's really really tough to pay attention to every single hand that gets dealt. So one uh, piece of advice that I would have for those. In, in that regard, and I'll say this before we actually get into the hand, is I tell a lot of my students to be sure you pay attention pre-flop to exactly what the pre-flop action was, and then at the very end of the hand, pay attention to what cards people are showing down. And if you pay attention to that, those two pieces of information is at a minimum. Pay attention to what the action was like pre-flop and what hands people are showing down. You will be able to gather up 90% of the useful information. And then you don't have to be feel like you have to be paying attention constantly while you're playing. So if you want to send a text message or two in the middle of the hand, uh, you know, that's fine. Hey, we all have responsibilities and lives outside of poker. It's impossible to always be focused 100% of the time. So some things you'll get out of this will be, you know, you'll notice, um, okay, that guy there just uh, showed down ace seven offsuit um, and he limped it from early position. So now I can make a note that apparently this guy here will limp any ace high hand. That's a good piece of information to know. Um, you know, this guy just showed down seven four of hearts from the button and he had he had called a pre-flop raise with it. So I'm going to make a mental note that this guy here apparently will play any two suited cards, um, you know, at least from the button for a raise. So it's a, you know, good, good thing to make a mental note on there too. So little things like that will be 90% of the useful information. Sure, you're not going to get all the nuances of their playing style and stuff like that. To really get that, you would have to be paying attention 100% of the time. But you can, with a minimal amount of effort, paying attention pre-flop to what 
the preflop action is, and then looking at the hands that get showed down, you can get 90% of the useful information out of that. So there's my tip for the day. Let's go on into the hand here. Okay, so let's take a look at the hand here. This hand was submitted by MB Cali Guy. Thanks for submitting it. And uh, we've got a aggressive opponent. We'll hover over him and we see that he's an aggressive intermediate player. And uh, he raises pre-flop to four times the big blind from early position. And we three bet uh, to 23. So the raise, original raise was to $8. And now we three bet to $23 with ace-king offsuit from the big blind. I definitely like three betting here, although I'm not a fan of the sizing. I think your three bet sizing here should be a little bit bigger. Uh, there's three reasons I feel that way. Uh, first of all is that uh, this kind of hand, you know, if we do take down the, uh, the blinds with this hand and take down that original uh, $8, so that's, you know, we've got five and a half big blinds out there right now already. If we count our big blind, which is, which is already in the pot, we can't take it back. So uh, if we raise uh, bigger here, the worst thing that can happen is he folds and we take it down and win five and a half big blinds. And that's really a great result with ace king. You know, some people feel like, oh, this is such a premium hand and I haven't gotten dealt a good hand in an hour and I want to play a flop. But, you know, if you were to look, if you had a database of all the hands you've played and you were to look at how many big blinds you win on average, over the long term with a hand like ace-king offsuit, you would probably find that you win, again, on average, maybe three or four big blinds per time you play ace-king. So to win five and a half big blinds right here and take it down without having to go to a flop is a better than average result. So for that reason, I would like to see uh, this raise size be really closer to 30, maybe even a little bit more than 30. The second reason why I like to raise more with ace-king pre-flop out of position here is because if we do have to go to a flop, I'd like there to be more money in the pot to lower my stack to pot ratio. There's two good reasons for that. One is that when I'm out of position, the deeper the stacks are, the more the player in position is gonna be able to utilize the power of being in position. I think all of us could agree with once all the money goes in, it doesn't matter who's in position or not. So based on that, the quicker the money goes in, the less his power of position is. So by raising more, if I do have to go to a flop, the stack to pot ratios are lower and his power of position is not going to be as significant. Um, in addition, the lower stack to pot ratio is great with a hand like ace king also, which generally when it does hit the flop, it's going to flop exactly one pair. And hands with one pair are more difficult to play the deeper the stacks are and the lower the, the, the higher the stack to pot ratio. So for example, if we don't raise here, we're going to go to the flop with $17 in the pot and we're gonna have a stack to pot ratio of about 10. Flopping one pair, one pair is a little bit trickier to play with a stack to pot ratio of 10. By raising to 30 here, son, we're gonna to go to the flop with a stack to pot ratio of three. And that's great because if we do hit top pair, we really can't be making a big mistake by going all the way with top pair, top kicker with an SPR of three. But with 10, it gets a little trickier. Um, when, when we're that much more deep stacked. So that's one thing I, I prefer to see. I'm glad that our hero three bet here, but I would have liked to have seen him three bet a little larger. Okay, so uh, we go to the flop here and, and the flop is um, ace of clubs, jack of diamonds, six of spades. So we flop top pair, top kicker, and there's not a lot of draws out there. This is a uh, pretty dry flop here. And we bet the size of the pot and our opponent here, who again is an aggressive player, uh, for all practical purposes, goes all in. He leaves $4 in his stack. If we were, uh, if we were playing against an opponent in a live card room, I might wonder about why he left this $4 in his stack. I think in this case, it probably was just the, uh, and again, I, I wrote these, 
these bots, obviously. I think it was just his his uh, programming told him to raise to exactly that amount. It happened to leave four dollars in his stack. But against a real opponent, uh, I might be uh, be wondering why did he leave four dollars? It you know seems almost a little uh, obnoxious to do that. And maybe when players are kind of being obnoxious, I wonder are they trying to goad me into a call? You know, I, I I'd have to lean towards that would be. Uh, trying to, you know, is he trying to get me? He's leaving four dollars behind because he wants to, he wants me to to re-raise him all in for that extra four dollars, and I'll feel powerful, powerful because I made the last uh, the last raise. Maybe he's really trying to. So I would, I wouldn't consider that conclusive, but I might say, you know, I might, it might make me lean towards the fact that he really does want to call here. But be it as it may, and against the bots here, I'm not sure that uh, that was actually his rationale probably not but so he does go for all practical purposes he goes in uh, all in for hundred and seventy three dollars so the pot had ninety eight dollars in it uh, and he went all in for hundred and seventy three so um, we have to look well let's you know let's start thinking about this first okay first of all what kinds of hands does he likely have here he called the three bet pre-flop and now he's committed all his chips on this this flop. So um, he's probably doing that with a super strong value hand or some kind of semi bluffing hand or possibly even a just completely pure bluff just for the hell of it because he is an aggressive player and aggressive players do that from time to time. So let's take the uh, semi bluffing hands first. There really aren't a lot of semi bluffing hands we can come up with on a board like this, right? You know, what is really, you know, what does he really have that he's semi bluffing with? Um, I mean, the first thing that came to mind would be something like king queen of clubs, but we're holding the king, king of clubs. You know, if he had, if you have king queen of clubs, that would give him the nut, the nut backdoor flush draw and a gut shot. But yeah, again, we're we're holding the king of clubs, so you, know, you could have some other uh, combination of king queen suited maybe uh, maybe he's got queen jack of spades that would give him middle pair and backdoor straight end flush draws maybe so I mean, there's a there's a couple possibilities here they're not strong possibilities we have to wonder would he really want to go all in with these kind of hands they're definitely not very strong draws uh, if he's gonna if he's gonna play queen jack suited that way i mean Really, wouldn't he just call with it? Wouldn't it make sort more sense to call? I mean, obviously, if he goes all in here, he's going to get called by hands that are better than his pair of jacks, and he's going to fold out hands that are worse than it. So whenever you find yourself getting called by all the better hands and folding out all the worse hands than you, you have to wonder, why did I raise in the first place? So, so let's look at some value hands. What actual value hands could he have here? Um, probably doesn't have pocket aces. He would have most likely four bet with pocket aces. And really we have a blocker to that. So there's only one combination of pocket aces still out there. He could have pocket jacks. So there's three combos of pocket jacks. Um, there's three combos of pocket sixes. Maybe he would raise from early position with sixes and call a re-raise. Although, you know, that I, I would discount that a little bit. Um, certainly ace jack suited. That would be the kind of hand that uh, you know, he would raise from early position with um, and would possibly call a re-raise. So what we're coming up with here is we're coming up with a lot of legitimate value hands he could have and not a lot of semi-bluffing hands. Now, there could be some pure bluffs out there as well. I mean, again, what, you know, if we had something like pocket queens or pocket tens, it doesn't make a lot of sense for him to go all in here, right? I mean, wouldn't he be better if you had... If you had queens here or kings and you intended to, you were intending to, intending to go the distance, wouldn't you just call and let your opponent put the rest of the chips in on the turn, and uh, you know keep all of, keep all of his bluffs, meaning our hero's bluffs, in his range on the turn? Certainly, that'd be a superior way to play it. So I don't think he has something like pocket queens here, but uh, you know he could have a complete total bluff like something like nine eight of diamonds or something like that. So I think against a uh, straightforward player here, I think you could actually think about laying this down. But given that, again, I want to I want to read out what this player's description says, aggressive intermediate, he'll try to sweep your chips off the table with his wild style. Uh, 
if if what is written there is actually the truth about this guy, this guy sounds like a poker bully. And yeah, let's look at the pot odds we're being offered here. It's going to be another 120 some odd chips to us. And there is 271 in the pot. So we're getting more than two to one on our money here. You know, we only need to, he only needs to be bluffing about 30% of the time for this uh, call for the rest of our chips here to be correct. So I think if we actually trust uh, what what that text says about this player, we trust our read on him. I don't really see how we can lay down top pair, top kicker here, even though most likely we're going to be disappointed when we see his hand and he is going to show us, you know, ace jack suited or pocket jacks or something. So, um, so I think uh, I don't fault uh, our hero here for calling this. Yeah, you know, it's possible that uh, by betting a smaller amount on the flop, a more desirable result could have been achieved because you know I think that by betting the pot on the flop, uh, I don't think we're going to get called by much, uh, much less than our hand. I think we're just kind of eliminating all of the, yeah, you know. Um, He's gonna he's gonna fold his pocket queens and he's gonna you know fold his uh, his ace ten suited perhaps and I think you know I think probably a smaller uh, bet size on the flop here would have uh, kept some of those overall against his entire the entire range of his opponent it would have kept uh, more of those hands in his range so that'd be one improvement I could make is maybe don't don't bet the pot on the flop here. But uh, overall, I think we I think we're just going to have to call this, and we're going to have to lose our money, and you know, and but it, more than thirty percent of the time, this guy, given his personality, this guy is not going to have us beat. And if we, you know, if we if we fold Ace King here, we're just going to be folding way too much of our range, and we're just going to be letting this guy walk all over us on this and on future hands as well. So, so we do call here, and. And the rest of the remaining four chips go in on the turn. And, and he does show us ace, jack of spades, which is actually more than any other two cards. That's the exact two cards I would expect him to have here because he has the backdoor flush draw and two pair. And, uh, um, you know, that this is, you know, certainly the, the way a guy like him would play, he would certainly call a three bet pre flop with ace jack suited. So it makes a lot of sense. But I think that if we really were to go in depth and look at uh, all the potential, uh, you know, hands he could have been playing and uh, looking at it from his perspective, if he thinks we're at all weak, he can probably pretty uh, profitably go all in here. If we're, especially if he thinks we were going to fold something as strong as ace king, he can pretty profitably make this play and put us to the ch test for all our chips and make us go away. So, so that's about all I have to say about this hand. Again, definitely pay attention to your opponent types. You've got to know your opponent types because if this guy, if I'd been playing against this guy for two hours and I had seen him show down nothing but premium hands and like the nuts every time, I, I could see myself laying this down here. That would certainly be exploitable from a game theory standpoint, and I wouldn't want to do it too often if other people are paying attention, but against one tight opponent that was very predictable, I could actually see making this lay down here just because the board is so dry, there just aren't any semi-bluffs for the most part available out there, and most uh, conservative players are either going to have premium value hands here that are better than top pair, top kicker, or um, or you know semi bluffing hands with a lot of outs and there aren't a lot available here. They also could have ace king as well. I could see someone shoving all in with ace king, but that would be the only value hand. I don't I don't think they would shove with ace queen. I think they would just call and and let us put the rest of the chips in on the turn. But ace king they might just go ahead and shove with. So at best I think if they had a hand in their value range, which would be almost their entire range. Uh, at, at best, we would be would be chopping with them here. So, okay, that's about all I have to say about this hand. Thanks for submitting it. Be sure to submit uh, your hands in our shared hands forum, so that other APT members and uh, people like me can review them for you. And uh, thanks for being a member of Advanced Poker Training. I'll talk to you next time.